we wanted to to give you this refresher, this reminder on the configuration related to the objects ID, to the IDs that you see in the front end. Uh, you know already this is part of the application configuration. So for those of you that have several systems configured in our application, the numbering range is uh, defined for all those and you can uh, set up uh, the numbering range for all the type of objects that we have, such as master list agreement, contract list components, and, and going further to activation group units and subunits. Um, Further to that, you can set up the numbering range by lease area, by company code, uh, and also by year. This level of granulation really depends on your needs, on your business structure. So uh, just a, a little reminder on uh, the fact that this is something that you already have configured in your in your application. If you want to change it, you can do so. Uh, all the uh, numbering range will take effect moving forward, not affecting what was already uh, what was already assigned. In respect to the year, I know that some of you define a different uh, numbering range for every year. Sometimes this is uh, consistent with what you have in your own ERP, in your SAP, for example. This uh, used to be the norm, but if ever this becomes too burdensome because you need to change that every year, you can set up a general year like 9,999 and uh, set up the numbering range. A special note on the manual ID assignment. I know for some of our users, some of our companies that are using um, Nakisa, you have the manual ID assignment. And this is because you absolutely want to have a certain uh, type of um, ID associated with the objects. However, what we've seen in practice that for the user, this, uh, this can be a problem. So if they don't have access, and in, in a lot of cases, the users in the front end, they don't have access to the back end, then they will get into this type of errors where the ID that they sign, it's either not in the numbering range or they get a message that uh, that particular ID is already uh, existent in the database. So just a, a note, a warning note here, if this is something that you need, if it's not something that you specifically need, you can always change that for, uh, for our functional administrators on the line right now you can always change that configuration going forward. Um, all the IDs that you set up, the, the ranges that, that you set up in the configuration, they will appear in what we call the display ID. So what the user sees in the front end. And just a quick reminder that while you upload the contracts or the MLAs, what you are seeing is in fact the the display ID in the front end. The object ID, the one that it is stored in the database that ensures the relationship between tables is the contract ID, the object ID, uh, the contract uh, for, for the contract. I'm, I'm using this as an example. So what you will be seeing in the front end is always the display ID and I know we're at the time, but really quickly to jump into the uh, into the application to to show you this. What you are seeing here is the display ID. In the contract ID table, the actual object ID is the one that is stored in the back end. And a quick reminder of where you have the numbering range is part of the application setting in the application configuration in the numbering range. That's it for today. And if ever there are questions, please send them to me or Julie. We'll get back to you. And also if you wanna, if you're interested in other topics, uh, let us know.